Shorter delivery timeline for LLG poles. Western Highlands introduces e-learning to schools. And 20 million kina released for Bougainville referendum work. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Thursday's news. Now we'll go to our top stories a little later in the bulletin. But first, the head teacher of Ganton Primary School in Ley has told MTV that the school has been operating by getting school supplies on credit from service providers. Martina Tani Alu says they now owe over 40,000 kina to suppliers. Nearly all government schools are in debt because tuition fee-free funds have not been paid. This is Ganton Primary School. It is located at West Taraka, a community in the Huen Gulf District, Morobe. Administratively, the school is under lay district. The school's head teacher, Martina Tanyalu, told MTV News in Lay that the school is in a very bad situation. The school can't operate anymore because it owes service providers more than 40,000 kina. Service providers won't allow the school to get school supplies on credit anymore because the tuition fee-free funds have not been paid since January. At the moment they are asking us when we are going to pay up our debts. Nami Plapaini had because of TFF not coming in and parents are not helping. Parents are not supportive because Mipla think thing low education low picking in Mipla walk this la. But uh, parents are not supporting us in that area. Also, me pla purchase him desk on credit basis. Uh, desk me pla kiss him blow help him also Martin. Um, me pla kiss him 60 pieces from a company. Na uh, only it's worth 23,000. And that 23,000 is still outstanding. We haven't paid anything yet. On Monday, eight schools in Lay reported that Water PNG was going to cut their water supplies due to the non-payment of bills. The schools don't have money to pay the bills. Yesterday, the principal of Nawai Lutheran High School told MTV News that the school was also running on credit. The suppliers refused to provide services because they don't trust the government financial system anymore. You know, to ask people to assist with mess goods and stuff like this on credit is very difficult when they know that TFA is not forthcoming. So suppose government and looks at struggles with me plan, we can help me plan to pay TFF. And the amount they are paying us, it's um, I mean, not enough too, because the only um, running of the school, I'm running of the school, and me rely on TFF as well. Parents are relying on the government, because government is free education, only to also parents, but no can pay them anything, any parental support fee. Only reluctant to pay, and we talk to them, but Parents on the phone to him government and help him finish this area. So, we know say now one of kind solution, but we plug out this area. So, only thing him government, he must because the policy blown. All must fulfill him this policy blown. Schools were visited, even, even uh, I called them through the mobile, and uh, they all have the same response that their their financial account is in red, in red, and uh, most of the schools. Uh, uh, they they said that they will not survive for the next four or five weeks, and looks like uh, uh, they will be winding down or closing up before end of end of them too. This week we spoke to ten schools. All of them, like Gantom, are in debt because tuition fee free funds have not been paid to them. Lay District Education Manager Kamulaga confirmed to MTV News this week that almost 22 primary schools and 65 elementary schools have not been paid their second quarter TFF money by the government. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. Western Highlands Governor Pius Wingti, in an effort to improve academic standards in his province, has introduced e-learning to schools. He says public schools are dropping in maintaining standards and it needs to be addressed well. Vasanatayama with this report.
With weak teasers, the Western Highlands provincial government is working towards setting standards right in all the schools in the province. Standards from academics, hygiene, behaviors at the primary level, high school and secondary schools. The provincial government and the education board are also working to introduce testing systems to grade threes and six. Wingti says if they can't pass the test, they will have to be repeated to ensure that all the students are well educated before they go to high schools. We need to do everything possible within our power to help wherever we can to make to get this education back. So I think uh, the province is on a mission to really get that. A check of 146,000 kina was presented to Kokoda Angels Incorporation, a service provider of the e-learning materials. Close to 26 high schools and five secondary schools in the province will pilot the e-learning program. Western Highlands Education Board Chairman Lawrence Penner says the board are embracing e-learning programs to transform the approach of teaching and learning and to provide independent learning. To make sure that we access it, it's made available to our students and to our students. What we need to do, like what they are saying, is we need to make sure that they, this, this program is updated, this program is maintained so that the efficiency of that program is available to children and teachers at all times. The e-learning program comes with gadgets and devices that will be connected to a separate Wi-Fi provided with the equipment. It has phonics programs which has attracted the governor so that students can also pronounce words properly and speak fluent English. Customize apart from all these things, whether you know, using a big screen. Western Highlands Provincial Government is the first to engage with Kokoda Angels in cooperation to roll out this program. Individual schools will have to pay 10,000 kina to get the program rolling. You have been creative, you find solutions, and you have found your own solutions to the problem that you're going to address in the province government. Meanwhile, Wingti says education system and standards in many public schools in the country are declining and proper measures need to be used to address it. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The Foreign Investment Regulatory Authority bill tabled in Parliament early this year must be immediately set into motion. This was one of the main points raised during a mini-seminar in Maprik, East Sipik Province recently. The mini-seminar, which was initiated by the Constitutional Law Reform Commission, focused on laws that will protect and enhance proper planning and development of Maprik. Maprik, like many growing townships in the country, has nearly 80% of its retailing businesses run by foreigners, especially Asians. Although it is good for the township in terms of economic growth, it has caused many barriers to local businesses, mainly small business enterprises, to grow. The seminar revealed that the bill, if passed into law, will be beneficial for locals who want to venture into businesses. Maprik MP John Simon said he will be addressing the foreign influx issue in the district, but the people must cooperate and involve in projects and programs to help boost the economy. A young visual artist in East New Britain province is creating a new avenue of preserving Papua New Guinea's cultures and traditions through visual arts. In a makeshift studio in a neighborhood in Rabaul town, Edwin Siroy, a self-taught artist, says he wants to produce a visual arts library that captures PNG's myths, legends and other culturally related portraits that are slowly dying out. This is Edwin Siroy, a young self-taught visual artist. At his makeshift painting studio at his parents' home in Rabaul Town, he is putting the final touches to a portrait of binding fire dancers that he wanted to sell. But what's more important in his painting, apart from selling them, is that he wants to create a visual arts library through his portraits. And most of his work have deep meanings that capture some of PNG's oral history in the form of paintings. So mostly I'm not talking me law, but me painting one and something, but mostly me it's a painting. Lo especially something or place or tubon or binding or different different old mask. 
Edwin hasn't been to any visual arts school, but he has been an active participant of a Catholic church youth group in Rabaul town. In 2016, he came to a point of realization that his work done within their youth group has been outstanding and complemented by others. Just starting in 2016, me find out that I can paint, I can draw. I even go to London school and play a short course or so no got straight. Made me find out that I can paint. Since then, he has maintained that trapping PNG's dying customs and traditions through paintings is one positive way of telling an ancient story over many years. Story about two stones on them. Um, I think that sample lines I started before I learned I got sample lyric story blame. I mean, my kissing my story blame, past them before me painting. So the time old man he asked him, um, to painting he. Meaning one of them, we can talk about those them. The stone them, style of place them, pla. Um, story blame them. We got the line before the staff. Now all no more staff, more the silent. He says the possibility of holding on to these pieces of PNG's history will be difficult for many young people of his age who have now chosen to live their lives differently. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Finance Minister Richard Maru has confirmed the release of 20 million kina in funding for the Bougainville Referendum Commission. This amount represents the full budgeted amount in the 2019 national budget to assist the BRC in conducting the upcoming referendum in the autonomous region of Bougainville. It will be parked within two accounts at Bank of PNG, with the drawdown and transfers to be managed by the National Coordinating Office of Bougainville Affairs. According to Minister Maru, the Department of Finance is supporting ENCOBA in accounting for these funds through support of the Integrated Finance Management System, IFMS. Funding for the BRC is aimed at supporting electoral and non-electoral activities in the lead-up to the referendum scheduled to begin October 12th. In announcing the release of funding, Minister Maru has also appealed to the ABG to adhere to legal and compliance requirements of the Public Finance Management Act to ensure the money is put to good use. Shareholders of the Pogera Gold Mine met with the new Prime Minister James Marape recently to discuss the special mining lease extension. Discussions from that meeting were not disclosed, but shareholders are in talks to extend the SML license for another 20 years. The current special mining lease will expire on August 16 this year. Mineral Resources Authority recently held a warden hearing in Pogera, Enga province, to collect views from SML and mining lease landowners. Enga Governor Sir Peter Ipatas in April said new terms and conditions need to be set for landowners and locals to benefit from the mine. Barrick Gold Corporation and Zijin Mining Group own 95% of the Pogera gold mine. This is National MTV News. We'll be back with more after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The Australian government and service providers in Manus have been asked to take steps to mitigate the increase in reports of asylum seekers and refugees inflicting self-harm. The Immigration and Citizenship Authority has obsessed more reports of self-harm incidents in Manus after the Liberty Party won elections in Australia last month. Chief Migration Officer Solomon Kanta said with the change in Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister, there were again some reports last week. Thus, Mr Kanta says called, has called on the Australian government to take steps to address this. The Common Training Institute was presented its license to operate again as an educational institution. Focusing on short skills training, it enrolled 400 students for 2019. KTI Director Max Corey says the renewable of the KTI's license marks a new beginning for the institution. Established in 2007, the Kumul Training Institute served as a training avenue for grades 10 and 12 school leavers who wanted to take short training courses. Registered with National Training Council, KTI expanded to three centers outside of Port Mosby, providing short courses. I saw that there was a need in uh, uh, 
the dropouts has increased so and so. Then when the dropout increased, oh, we had to seek opportunity for others to attend training, to continue. Uh, then Kumul Training Institute has its own uh, reputation in training. We uh, provided this uh, uh, skills-oriented training in business courses, uh, trade courses, uh, plant and motor vehicle trainings. In 2012, its license to provide training had expired. After complying with all requirements, KTC renewed KTI's license of quality assurance compliance to continue operating under the Technical Vocational Education Training or TVET sector. Therefore, I complied with the, uh, the quality, quality assurance of TVET sector uh, in order for registration and accreditation of their programs. Uh, it took them a while, and uh, now they are here located at Tokarara uh, for the uh, deliverance of the skills-based training to general public and the population of Papua New Guinea. So I'm pleased to present this uh, certificate on behalf of uh, National Training Council. For 2019 academic year, the institution registered 400 students. Most have come from other provinces. It has increased its staff ceiling to 25 instructors based in Port Mosby and has invested in machineries to allow those enrolled under mechanical courses some practical experience. We are committed to to provide uh, training in this country and here you can see that at the back of my yard here having uh, too many buildings coming up with uh, uh, facilities that are provided. We have spent substantial amount of money to ensure that uh, we provide an uh, institution with this, uh, quality training facili facilities. That will make sense to Papua New Guineans that, that, that we must spend money where it's supposed to be and get the quality outcome of the training itself and here I am. Tomorrow, 200 of its students will be graduating from the short courses. While it will be a proud moment for them, it will also be an achievement for KTI as an institution. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. There needs to be more awareness in homes, schools and communities on ways to minimize damages to the environment. This was the message given to Nawai High School students yesterday during the World Environment Day celebrations. Speaking to the students was the head of the University of Technology Forestry Department, Dr. Max Pecky. He said World Environment Day should be observed every day because the environment is constantly under threat. Dr. Pecky said awareness should start within homes so children especially become aware of their actions towards the environment. The only way to keep him like something was under control or you know, look out in good and you must uh, work in this like awareness inside of schools now. Even to the first or some awareness you walk in and you must walk inside along one one house line doing. Or say you mama and papa or say, um, number one teacher. Ilimo Dairy has released their new dairy product, the Ilimo Dairy Moo Snacks. Yesterday, the product was available for free tasting at the Vision City Mega Mall at Waigani. MTV News was there to chat with some of the customers. Ilimo Dairy has launched a new dairy product, adding to a product line that has greatly expanded since the launching of Ilimo Fresh Milk last year. The Ilimo Dairy Moo Snacks is now available in selective supermarkets within the nation's capital. It's amazing how the company runs and stuff. I think it, it should be selling out very quickly on the shelves. Yeah. Ilimo introduced the product two weeks ago. They have been doing free sample tasting at major shopping centers, supermarkets and schools in Port Moresby. This is important for the company as it gives the public a platform to give transparent consumer feedback. The new dairy snack has a pudding texture 
And although many had trouble describing the product, they bravely welcomed it. I think I tasted it. I think a bit of sugar inside this. First time me try this, I am sweet more. Nam sweet. Nami plan to him look like I. I love it. I think it's good for the body also. Nutrition. Me taste this ice cream and nice more more yet. Sweet more yet. And up not I'm running out of two years. Look at what. Elimo ice cream is now sold in chosen hotels and available at Harborside in Enzo's and Elimo yogurt will be making an appearance in the coming months. Lillian Soperakinea, National, MTV News. A bypass has been built at Urea following the collapse of the bridge on Monday. Built by the National Works Department and equipped plant contractors stationed at Kesawai, it will serve as a temporary measure for motorists and the transportation of goods and services into Medeng town. Located just after the Ramu station in the Usino Bundi district, the bridge is an important link for people using the Le Medeng and Medeng Highlands highways. The road was reopened yesterday, allowing people to use. We'll go for a break now. Among stories making headlines overseas, Solomon Islands' views on establishing ties with China and President Trump's visit to the United Kingdom. Details after the break. Welcome back to the news. Electoral Commissioner Patilius Gamato says the LLG elections will be conducted under a compressed timeline to deliver the elections. Mr. Gamato says the revised dates will see the nomination period of seven days, campaign period 14 days and polling and counting six days. The revised dates follows a Supreme Court decision on 25th April, setting aside a stay order by the Ombudsman Commission, Umi Adzira LLG in Makam and East Sipic Provincial Government. With the treatment Supreme Court bench ruling unanimously in favor of the PNG Electoral Commission, Mr. Gamato says the dates of the LLG elections have been revised. He says a nominations and campaign will begin on Thursday, 27 June 2019. The nomination closes Thursday, 4th of July 2019 at 4 p.m. The polling and counting starts on Saturday, 20 July 2019. The polling and counting ends on Thursday, 25th of July 2019. The return of reads will be on or before. Friday, 26th of July, 2019. As you will realize, that these dates have been compressed uh, to meet to meet the uh, uh, date for the return of rate. The PNG Electoral Commission, 22 provincial governments and district development authorities have about a month to conduct the LLG elections. The short turnaround of dates will also see counting and declarations be made by returning officers. Mr. Gamato says delays will also be considered. Uh, so what we will do is we will poll and then we will count uh, straight after polling. And we can expect results to come. We can expect uh, uh, some declarations to, uh, to be made. Uh, these decla declarations will be provisional declarations um, because only the returning officer can make the declaration. According to the PNG Electoral Commission, about 5 million eligible voters are expected to cast their votes. PNG EC will also be recruiting 21,000 temporary election workers around the country to assist in the LLG elections. The head of the Electoral Commission says the limited preferential voting system will be used. The LLG elections are, are rural-based, they're village-based, uh, and so we don't expect uh, uh, much uh, trouble. 30 million kina has been released with election materials shipped to all provinces. Another 20 million will also be released this month before nominations open. Mr. Gamato also made it clear that the election will only be for ward councillors while presidents will be elected through LLG assemblies. The council presidents will be elected in their respective uh, legislative assemblies. Okay, so after the ward elections are conducted, and when they convene the first meeting, the first uh, uh, business would be to elect the president of the local level government. Jack Lepava, Junior National, MTV News. 
Turning overseas now, a battle is growing in the Solomon Islands after the country's new prime minister announced he was looking at establishing ties with China instead of traditional ally Taiwan. New Zealand Foreign Minister Winston Peters is in the capital Honiara to foster a stronger relationship with the Solomons. Burns Creek is a notorious trouble spot. More than two-thirds of the country's population is under the age of 30. Boredom, lack of jobs, alcohol all make for a toxic mix. Yes, the biggest problem in me Solomon Island. Every young people, they don't have the job. About 80% of youth are unemployed. When trouble erupts, they're usually leading the charge. It's on this landscape that an international battle for influence is being waged. If you want to be engaged here, the first thing you've got to do is uh, come on a listening mission. That means... That means uh, not with the earmuffs on. But New Zealand is a small player amongst the big hitters. It's not hard to find signs promoting Taiwan's aid to the Solomon Islands, but the new Prime Minister, Manasse Songavari, is considering switching allegiance from Taiwan to China. And it's China coming to the table with the big bucks. It was enough to bring Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison running. In a change of direction, he's promised the Solomons $250 million of aid for infrastructure structure, including a new Prime Minister's office. A king hit for China, which is known for funding buildings and stadiums. Our relationship with the Solomon Islands, our relationship with the Pacific transcends all of that. New Zealand has a tough act to follow. Instead of flashy buildings that make an instant impact, it's putting aid money into youth education long-term development, like the soon-to-be upgraded Youth Hub, a bid to keep kids off the street. To keep them busy and... Uh... New Zealand hopes its $114 million in sustainable aid projects will be enough to convince the New Solomon Islands government it's a worthwhile partner. We would hope that they have made a decision in the long-term interests of their values and Pacific values. And that's the crunch. In general, New Zealand's respected amongst locals here. I'm too proud of New Zealand, Australia, a little bit different. Other places, a little bit different. But New Zealand is like local people. The people may be convinced, but the jury's out on the politicians. In the coming hours, ceremonies will begin for the 75th anniversary of D-Day, the Allied invasion that marked the beginning of the end of World War II that changes the course of history. President Trump will be there paying respects at the American Cemetery in Normandy, France. On Wednesday, he wrapped up his state visit to Britain, a trip filled with ceremonies and controversy. Wrapping his second official visit to the United Kingdom as president. It's a great, great to be able to have a to come to this country again. It's a great honor to be with you. President Trump and the First Lady taking in one last event with the Queen as she bid farewell. Great woman. Great, great woman. While the president seemingly said the right things during formal events, he made waves in an interview with Piers Morgan. Do you personally believe in climate change? I believe that there's a change in weather, and I think it changes both ways. Trump falsely equated climate with weather and said he believes the term climate change is basically just a marketing strategy. So don't forget, it used to be called global warming. That wasn't working. Then it was called climate change. Now it's actually called extreme weather. Mm -hmm. Because with extreme weather, you can't miss. Trump also setting the record straight regarding comments he made about American actress Meghan Markle, now Britain's Duchess of Sussex, insisting he never called her nasty, just her statements about him in 2016. I wasn't referring to her. She's nasty. I said she was nasty about me. And that's okay for her to be nasty. It's not good for me to be nasty to her. And I wasn't. And on gun control, after the recent mass shooting in Virginia, where the killer used a silencer to quiet his shots, the president said he would consider legislation banning the sale and use of silencers. Yeah. What is your view I don't of silencers? Like I don't would, you, like would you like to see those back? Well, I, I'd like to think about it. I mean, nobody's talked about silencers very much. I don't love the idea of it. I don't like the idea what's happening is crazy. Okay, it's crazy. Trump now overnighting at his golf resort in Ireland, his first trip to the country as president, and squeezing in a brief meeting with the Irish Prime Minister. Is this trip for you just about promoting your golf building? No, this trip is really about uh, great relationships that we have with the UK, and uh, I really wanted to do this stop in Ireland. 
Here in Ireland, the perception is that this trip for President Trump is much more about pleasure than work. The only working item on the president's agenda during his two nights day was that meeting at the airport with the prime minister that lasted only around 45 minutes. Now, a U.S. official pushed back on that, saying that the president had important issues to talk about with the Irish prime minister, including trade and Brexit. The president himself also said uh, this was more than just a golf trip. And the Irish official I spoke with said perhaps it's better that the president came here in a low-key fashion to avoid some of the protests that we saw play out in England. Still on D-Day commemoration, some of the aircraft used in the invasion have recreated their flights across the English Channel. The first air border troops into Normandy were dropped 75 years ago. And today, two veterans who parachuted in 1944 recreated their event again. Just after midnight, 75 years ago tonight, a dark constellation appeared in the night sky above Normandy. Thousands of Allied troops dropped quietly into Nazi-occupied France. Among them was Harry Reid, a 20-year-old signaller with the 6th Airborne Division, told to complete his mission whatever the cost. We had a conviction that we, we had to fight, we had the, the most e evil things happening in the world that uh, were it not for the channel we would have been caught up with it as well. It was, it was a case of national survival. Today he parachuted into France again at the age of 95 to mark the D-Day anniversary. At the landing site crowds watch for him among the paratroop displays. This time, Harry made the jump with a member of the parachute regiment, landing not to enemy gunfire, but to applause and a hug from his daughter. Memories of the men he jumped here with 75 years ago brought tears to his eyes. What would be your message for them today? That their sacrifice was worthwhile, though tragic. Um, have you got a message for young soldiers coming up through the Like me, they were willing to die for what they knew to be to be necessary. Paras, Harry told one interviewer, learn to keep going when other people stop. Seventy-five years after he first dropped into France, he's proved that again today. Yo at National MTV News. Coming up next, some sporting updates in Shukai Sports. Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. After retiring from active participation after the 2015 Pacific Games as one of Papua New Guinea's gold medalists in athletics in the 200 meter and 400 meter events, Nelson Stone is now doing community service from his home at Tokarara in NCD. Fidley Sukina reports. Pacific Games 2015 400 and 200 meter gold medalist Nelson Stone, after retiring from active participation, is now working with his community at the suburb of Tokarara in Port Mosby using sports to provide leadership to the younger members of his community. He is not using athletics as the preferred sport, but rugby league. I thought of using rugby league as, as you know, it's a strong tool in, in the country. It's a national sport and, you know, I brought in a lot of youths who are roaming around aimlessly. I got them in and involved in sports, and including Ilalu, and, um, yeah, he, here we are. He is being helped by SPPNG Hunters forward Ilalu, who is also a member of the community. When Ila is off from the Hunters, he uses his experience from the Hunters to plan out the team's game plan and training sessions and all the while encouraging the young rugby league players to be good role models. I know I've been under Nelson's mentorship since uh, 2014, it's when uh, my career officially began off and, you know, of living every moment of my dream. Um, but, you know, for me, being here, you know, it's all about giving back to the community and saving, particularly the youth, you know. The main key thing for us here is to, you know, do best things to create a pathway for them that they could be able to, you know, get something out from their life and the next best thing is to you know keep them preoccupied 
Nelson Stone's team is called the Tokarara Nest United. They take part in the Port Mosby Suburban League at the Coney Tigers Oval in Port Mosby with under 20 A grade and a women's team as well. The Southern Region 9s, uh, we took part in, um, in 2015. We made it to the uh, pennant um, finals, uh, which was our first. Um, the Governor's Cup, the popular Governor's Cup, um, Hall of Season, and now, now um, uh, PNGR for sanction competition, which is the um, Port Mosby Suburban League. Yeah, so. Stone says it is satisfying for him to take time and be a mentor, a role model, and a coach to the younger generation within his community. I'm, I'm really satisfied. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, seeing um, a lot of youths who, who, who you know, believe in me and come and um, train under me. I only tell them about, talk about sports, but I talk about how it can better their lives and it has really, um, you know, give me that feeling of satisfaction. But there's definitely a lot of room to improve and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about, you know, the way things are going right now. Fidelis Sukina National MTV Sports. In swimming, coach and mentor to this year's Air Fury Games, coach Rick Vanderzand says PNG swim team did exceptionally well, winning a total of 21 medals, 10 silver and 11 bronze. Vanderzand will take eight home-based swimmers to the 2019 Pacific Games in Samoa next month. PNG is head coach for the swim team to next month's Pacific Games in Samoa is none other than Australian Olympic Games 200 meter individual medley swimmer Rick Vanderzent. Vanderzent recently coached 13 of our representative athletes at the Arafura Games where they won 21 medals. Arafura Games happened um, just about four or five weeks ago and um, we had 13 athletes up there, had an assistant coach Shane from Lay and um, plus two team managers and uh, our swimmers performed exceptionally well winning 21 medals, 10 silver and 11 bronze medals. So we had a fabulous time there and they all swam exceptionally well. Eight athletes from the 13 that attended the Arafura Games will attend the Pacific Games including the overseas based swimmers. From that team of 13 swimmers, I think there's been um, seven or eight swimmers selected from that Arafura Games team, plus three athletes based in Australia to compete for Papua New Guinea at the Pacific Games. So I've been here this weekend, involved it with a coaching clinic with um, the PNG Olympic Committee and uh, just trying to um, get some more information about it and I gave a little presentation about the PNG swimming uh, affair that I've had this last 12 months and uh, yes it's been very exciting. Benizant says the aim is to develop the skills of swimming at a young age and to get more young people involved in swimming. I, th I think it's really to give your sw uh, the young kids the opportunity to develop skills that they won't do in other sports. It's, a, it's an individual but it's also a very team orientated type sport. More schools should get involved and then from, from those schools the coaches will be out there and hopefully hand pick some of the talented kids, that, kids that show a little bit more um, um, potential in taking on swimming and then they encourage them to come along to the Baroko Swim Club and take on swimming as their main sport. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Still on swimming, a gala dinner was recently hosted by Barocco Amateur Swimming Club to raise funds for the swim team. President of Barocco Amateur Swimming Club, Des Blake, says any support the club can get from local business houses will assist swimmers compete at home and abroad. The gala dinner held recently was supported by corporate houses in Port Mosby to raise funds for PNG swimmers. President of Barocco Amateur Swimming Club, Des Blake, says the funds will go towards payment of hired facilities used by the club as well as swimming gears for the competitors in national and international events. Very high costs in rental at Tarama swimming pool and equipment for the swimmers and tonight is a, and our fees don't cover all the costs, so tonight is a fundraising event to help um, support the, the swimming for so many young Papua New Guineans who wouldn't otherwise get a chance to swim. The recent fundraiser will also assist swimmers attending the Pacific Games to be held next month in Samoa.
Directly but indirectly through the work of the club, through the training that they receive uh, in their, their coaching, in their squads, um, we're, we're all part of the, the whole operation. Certain selected swimmers, some of the better swimmers will be, will be going to these major events and they will be supported by PNGSI, the national swimming body, and, and also perhaps from the world governing body. He acknowledged the hard work, time and effort of volunteers to improve the standards and services of Barucco Amateur Swimming Club. Our efforts are all about the local club. And that local club, of course, is what feeds the pipeline of PNG's athletes who compete on the international stage. The ones competing now and the ones in the future. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues with more on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. Rugby league referees in the Intercity Cup competition are working to iron out their mistakes after countless mistakes have been identified on video. The competition has been recording all matches across the country on video and teams and referees have had access to the videos which referees have now come to realize they have been overlooking their mistakes in certain instances of the game. The intercity competition is into the halfway mark of the year and referees are closely being scrutinized. With the Papua New Guinea National Rugby League competition having video game analysis, PNG NRLC manager Stanley Hondina says the referees are being monitored for their infringements. Uh, we can already see only in nine weeks the processes are paying dividend by helping us to identify where the problems are. So when we brought the referees in like this morning when we went through one of the videos and they said these are mistakes that we keep on doing every now and then. So far after nine rounds, 54 matches have been recorded from the six games each weekend across the country. And coaches and referees have access to those videos for reviews. Yeah, once we get the games, we load them up to the cloud. And there's a software called Cloudberry or a direct link called Cloudberry that we load it to and that is installed in all the coaches' laptops. So we have 12 coaches who have access to those and they have access to the videos. Now why change the rules on? A three-day intense refereeing course is being attended by 14 referees from around the country and they are identifying mistakes that the referees have been doing unnoticed during matches. But we don't realize it. So we think that it's normal and we do it until we place it on record. And that's what the systems that are helping us to gain, to identify where those problems are. And then we try to work on solutions as to how we can fix it to help the game get better. The 14 referees who are attending the course in Port Mosby will be the referees consistent to the remainder of the season so they can be assessed and given time to improve on their performance. One ref refs once stays off for another three weeks, four weeks, gets another appointment. There's no consistency where you cannot really monitor how he's doing and assess and help. As a result, I told them, after you go through this, give me a list of at least 10 referees who are going to be the main center 10 referees for the next nine games. Fidelis Sukina, National MTV Sports. And that's wrap for Trukai Sports. Up next, the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecasts in the southern region. Cloudy with some showers in Port Moresby, Daru and Papandita. Rain drizzles, although cloudy in Kerama and a shower or two in Alotau. In the Momasu region, cloudy with light showers in Lee. Cloudy periods with brief showers in Medang and a shower or two in Wewek and Tvanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, rain showers and thunderstorms in Loingau, a few showers in Kaviang, cloudy with light showers in Kokopo and Rabao, cloudy with a shower or two in Kimbe, and cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms in Buka. 
and in the highlands region a shower or two with morning fog in Kundiawa, Nendi and Wabeg, rain drizzles in Mount Hagen. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Thursday, the 6th of June, 2019. From the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.